Hi guys, as I'm sure you're all aware, my name's Alex and um, today I'm going to be showing you all how to install a WAMP server or a testing server on your um, computer so that you can launch your websites. What a testing server allows you to do is view your web pages that you create online in a folder, in a structured folder format and all the links are sort of like navigated together how they would be presented on an external server. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to the WAMP website. Um, the website is wampserver.com and up here you can select your language, so obviously I'm English. It comes in English and French I think, so yeah. And what you want to do is you want to head over to Downloads and you want to download the uh, one specific to your build. So I'm using the 64-bit. I'm not going to download it, but I'm using the 64-bit. Um, so I'll be downloading this 2.2a. Don't download the beta one because um, it's unstable. I downloaded it before, but it doesn't have some of the um, functions that 2.2 um, has working. So for now, we're going to stick with this one here. So I'll be I'll be downloading this one if I was going to install it. But any 32-bit users can download this one. Um, 64-bit user should be able to run a 32-bit client on their machine, but um, it's obviously better if you use a 64-bit because it's going to be faster because you have memory locations it's got. Anyway, um, let's move on. <coughs> what you want to do after you've downloaded that um, is obviously you want to go to where you save it to, and then you want to unzip your, un your RAW file and preferably put it on your local disk. Um, and just let it sit there as WAMP. Um, it will do everything else for you, it should set itself up. And then inside of the folder you're going to have um, all of these subfolders and that don't, you don't want to be editing anything in here. www is where you're going to be making all of your... Um, oh my god, one minute guys, we've got a phone call. No mind. Um, <clears throat> this is where you're going to be making all your websites. So as you can see here I've got memory joggers, my A2 coursework, my absolute beginners, uh, my CMS, friends website, some games that I'm making in PHP, um, and a blogging system that I'm going through in a tutorial at the moment, just to get my, my hands around it, and then just some random PHP stuff. Um, you'll find it here an index.php. You never want to alter this. Basically, um, what the index.php does is... Um, one minute. If I can answer... Oh, one second. Um, scratch that. After, you guys, you should get this um, WAMP server icon on your desktop. If you double click that, it will start the WAMP server. And as you can see down here, I've got a little widget, widget in the bottom of my screen. And what this widget is saying to me is my server is currently online. So I should be able to go to my... Um, I should be able to go to my local host. So how we get to there is in our browser, we just literally type in localhost and this is what it's default to and that's basically it shows you all of your projects and then it tells you how to connect to your um, what's that? Um, I think it's this one yeah this is where you can see we're not going to be doing PHP just yet we're going to be going through um, <coughs> HTML so I'll touch on that when I actually get around to it but for now, we're going to be doing this. So, um, what you guys to do first is come to here, and we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call it um, Web Tools. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm just calling it Web Tools. <coughs> so now, if I refresh this page, I have Web Tools down here. When I open Web Tools, I can show you my, direct, my index and my directory that I've got. Right. So um, after you've installed your um, web server and you have this running, your index running, then what we want to do is get you running on a text editor. Now there's loads of text editors out there, loads of open source ones, loads of paid ones, and um, yeah, I'm just going to tell you the one that I use. It's called Insight. It's really good. Um, it has this thing called bundles where you can say like, say I've typed exclamation mark, it would bring it could bring up all of my PHP tags and everything. So it's really a, a good way to speed up the process when you're writing code. Because a lot of code is really repetitive. Especially when you're styling in CSS and HTML. <coughs> so, um... God, people next to me. Um, yeah, where was I? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Saying about um, 
bundles. <coughs> okay, so yeah, this is a really good text editor. It's got a really good, uh, really good syntax reader. So, say in here, it tells me when I'm opening my tags, when I'm closing my tags. It highlights it in a different color, so I know which elements, what element. It tells me when I'm in HTML. It tells me when I'm not. So it's it's really good to make your code clearer to use a read. <coughs> so I definitely uh, recommend getting that. Another good tool, Notepad Plus Plus. It's not quite as powerful as InType, but again, it's got it's really good on the um, highlighting of the different sort of text that you're using. And a lot of people recommend this um, IDE. Uh, finally, Dreamweaver is a good one because that presents things visually. Obviously, that costs a lot of money, and I don't have that sort of money to sort of buy that software, so I'm sticking with just using this. And you could even just use Notepad if you really wanted to. It does the same job, but obviously there's no syntax reading, so it makes it a lot harder to um, get through your code. Um, finally, another thing that I strongly recommend for anybody is Firebug. Um, and to use Firebug, you need to have Firefox. So once you've installed Firefox, you come down, you come into the Firefox part, and you go to Add-ons, and then you click on Add-ons, opens up a tab, and then <coughs> search for I can't remember what you search web developer, web developer, web developer. Brrr. Ah, there it is at the top, and just literally type in Firebug. Fire bike, I can't spell today. And then it is. Oh, fire page. So look for fire bike quick speed. Well, I'm going to install that, that's quite nice. <coughs> but I think because I've already got it, it won't appear on here. But basically, you you want. Um, let's do that as well. Um, Sorry guys, I'm sort of having fun installing some extra parts. Uh, I need these things. No, it's just fine. I'm so sorry. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's get on with this. So basically, you've got Firebug, and what's going to allow you to do is inspect all your elements. So I'll come to my coursework one that I've made, and then my register.php. I have this right. Now, it's not the best looking page in the world, but it's alright. But um, as you can see, I've got this class selector window here, and when I highlight that, it tells me all of my elements that are in there. It tells you what my current properties are. So, say um, I wanted to change. Let's scratch that. Okay. I have this input, right? And I can just literally go type background and then I'll go hashtag that. And as you can see now this field is now populated with black. Um it's it won't save your documents, it's literally just a way where you can build your CSS up to make it look and then you can get a sort of visual representation. So it's almost like using Dreamweaver. I, I like to think it's almost like dream, using Dreamweaver, but it's free open source. It's a big money saver, so definitely definitely go with that if you're gonna be developing. But just remember um, you're always going to have compatibility issues when you come into Internet Explorer because it's basically a fooked browser. I hate coding for uh, Internet Explorer, it's just the most awkward thing in the world. But I'll run you through some hacks later on how to bypass them and um, style around the errors that Windows, uh, Internet Explorer gives you. And as you code more and more, you get more used to the principles that. Um, I'm sort of talking about. So, <coughs> what we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to start building uh, a basic page and in HTML and then styling it with CSS. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed and you're ready, you're all set up and ready for the next part. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Peace.